Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Materials, the show where we demystify every node in the Unreal Engine material graph. Today we're going to be taking a look at basic math operations, add, subtract, divide and multiply, and what they actually do before the texture sample when we're dealing with the UVs and after the texture sample when we're dealing with the actual luminosity values. If you haven't used Photoshop much before or you know you're not really much of a visual person this can be really tricky to kind of grasp i guess the best way to experiment with it for someone that's just sort of you know doodling around would be to use linear gradients and to see how it affects other textures by using add subtract divide multiply so let's draw a little a little graph basically this is like an input output graph kind of i don't know what they're actually called this is zero this is one this is one so this is the value of the texture and this is the value post the operation how we're going to visualize this is we're going to have a line that goes perfectly diagonal and this just represents that when a value is zero in a texture zero being black then it will be black and then when it's one that it's one you know it's it's fully white if we were to say add a value to this gradient you can see as i increase this it looks like it's shifting up but what's actually happening is that it's just getting brighter it's just an optical illusion but you can see there's a little artifact right here you can actually see the clipping point of the white by adding to the value let's add 0.5 so we're going to shift this halfway up and what happens is you can't actually have any values above one if you've ever used cameras before you'll know what clipping is if you've ever used audio before you'll know what clipping is basically what happens is that all of this just gets truncated and the final output is this which is why we get that sort of that line right in the middle like this doesn't get any more white after this point if we go back the other way and go to 0 0.5 or negative 0 0.5 sorry you can see that past this midpoint it doesn't actually get any blacker and that's because the exact same thing if we were to get this and shift it down halfway you can see that at this you know 0 0.5 point it doesn't get any blacker. It can't get any blacker. So our final output ends up being this. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Same thing as UVs. We're offsetting by adding and subtracting. And multiply and divide do what you'd expect. They, they sort of, rather than move the whole thing up and down, they stretch it. Multiplying by two would stretch this up to like here. Your black values would still be fully black, but your white values are now double as bright and that will get truncated about here which ends up being 0 0.5 if you've done sort of elementary school maths you know you can count from zero to one and do some basic addition and subtraction um but where it gets pretty hairy is when you start overlaying textures on one another so let's say we've got this linear gradient again the texture sample we're going to be using is just a cloud noise texture and you can see it's got some zero values it's got black parts and it's got some one values which are these white white parts usually when you multiply a texture by another texture you're using it as a mask and this is linear gradient multiplied by the cloud texture so up towards this end it gets fully black and that's because in this cloud texture, regardless of if they're 1 or 0 0.5 or 0 0.1 or something, if they get multiplied by 0, they become 0, which is why up here it's like pitch pitch black. So that's sort of what multiplying is usually used for. It's, it's basically to mask things. If I had like a radial mask or something and then multiply that by our cloud texture, then you can see the edges are still black, but because the cloud texture has zeros in it, where the, the black spots of the, of the cloud are, it's making the white part of that gradient darker. So when you add two textures together, it basically does exactly what you'd expect. You know, down here we've got white on the, the gradient and also some white bits in the cloud texture. But because, you know, where both the gradient and the cloud are white would equal two, you can see that it's kind of clipping the texture. You know, these white parts don't get any wider 
in the middle. It sort of looks flat, if that makes sense. You can see up here the gradient is zero. And so it's basically just showing the cloud texture under it. That one, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Subtract is a, a kind of difficult one to kind of get your head around at first. It's different depending on, you know, are you subtracting this from this or this from this? The way to think about it is you've got a value of one down here. So we're going to subtract one from the cloud texture, which means we're going to end up with darker down here, normal up there, you know, regular unaffected up there. Whereas when we added them together, it was the opposite. It was no effect up here, but brighter down here. If we were to go back to subtract and flip them around so that we're subtracting the cloud texture from the gradient, you'll see that it's completely different. So wherever the clouds were white, we're subtracting that one value from the gradient. So the white parts will become darker but the black parts of the cloud won't affect the gradient texture at all. So you can see we've got this gradient. And then if you look at where the black parts of the cloud are, you can see that they let the gradient through basically. Now the next tricky one is divide. So you can see that when we divide the gradient by the clouds, wherever there is a zero value in the clouds, it will be very, very white in the in the output because as you approach dividing by zero, the value approaches infinity. If we were to do this the other way around, so dividing the clouds by the gradient, then you'll see that up here where the gradient is usually black, like this, the clouds approach infinity brightness. If you're confused at what UV means, U is basically just X coordinate and V is just Y coordinate. The reason that it's not X, Y is because this is a 2D vector. Because in three dimensional space, we use X, Y, and Z, but apparently in a 2D space, we use U and V. So what this is doing is it's appending a, a coordinate together. So this is X and Y or U and V. This is gonna be the U or the X and the Y is going to be zero. So we're only going to be shifting our texture horizontally by using the add node. So if I compile this and we take this parameter and we shift it, you can see that it's moving the texture along. So as I move this texture along, you can see when I approach 0 0.5, we're exactly halfway through the texture tiling once. As I make it all the way to one, you can see that we've completely wrapped around again. Now we're at one to two instead of zero to one because we've done a full wrap. I hope that kind of makes sense. If we were to do basically the same thing except use a multiply node instead of an add, got to make sure this is one because multiplying by zero, not a good idea. And as I increase this parameter, you'll see that it squishes the texture in. When I go to three, you can see we go zero, 0 0.5, one, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3. We've squished in the texture. Now that might sound counterintuitive and it did to me at first. In your brain you think, I'm multiplying it, shouldn't it be getting bigger? It's actually the opposite that is true. The explanation that I came up with for this is if we jump into paint and I grab my crayon. So this is zero, this can be three, and we'll put the midpoints in here. All right, so I've drawn us a little texture and this texture is mapped from zero to one UV, basically. So when we add to a UV coordinate, what we're doing is incrementing the actual UV's values. So this would become 0 0.5, this would become 1.5, this would become 2.5 and so on, so forth. We'd expect that by adding 0.5, that this first part of our texture tiling would now be at 0.5. And so if we go back to our texture, this kind of explains why when you're adding to the X UV, you would expect it to move in the positive X direction basically, but it actually goes the other way. And as I move it to 0.5, you can see that we're exactly halfway through the texture. 
the bit that was our far left side is now in the middle. It's at 0 0.5. So that's how adding and subtracting seem to work to me, at least for UVs. If we go in here and we look at multiplying, if we apply that same concept of we're affecting the, the UV rather than the texture. Say we're multiplying it by two. So one would become two, two would become four, four would become eight. How we can visualize this is we're actually stretching out the UV. So now we've multiplied the UV by two, basically. And, you know, if I was to draw under here, this would still be zero because zero times anything is still zero. This is where one used to be. This is where two used to be. This was three. This was four and so on. And you can see one times two is two. Two times two is four. The texture stays the same, but when it's actually viewed, if we squished it back down, you'll see that it's actually the texture that has become thinner or smaller. It will tile the texture and whatnot. So I've swapped out my texture for one that's closer to my, my example here. If we start to increment this multiplier to two from one, you can see when we reach two, that we've got two repeats of the thing in the in the x axis, x axi, <laughs> which is what we expected from looking at this. So multiplying by a big number will make something really small. Dividing by a big number will make something really big. Now this is going to come in handy when you're working with like world aligned textures. Some object you're using uses like a top down projected material. You're going to want to be able to scale that easily. So. That's about it from me today. I hope that that kind of demystified a little bit of what all these operations actually do, or what they're actually doing. This is obviously a very broad overview, but I thought I'd make this video so that in other tutorials and stuff, I can redirect people to here to make sure that they understand what adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing do in terms of editing the UVs of a texture and also the values of the texture output and stuff. As always, if you need help with anything Unreal related, then jump in our Discord. We have 24 seven support for everyone. Whatever your problem is, you know, we've got someone that can solve it. And I'd like to give a massive shout out to our very first Patreons or patrons, patrons of the Patreon, Dennis and Your Sandbox. If you don't have the means to support us on Patreon, liking this video and subscribing to the channel is super, super, super helpful as well. The YouTube algorithm is optimized to keep people on YouTube. So showing that you enjoy the video or that you're interacting with the video by liking and subscribing gives it a huge boost of reach and helps get this information out further into the, the Unreal environment. So with that, I say goodbye. Bye.